This is the basics of the circular flow model. I've already kind of labeled the household looking like a house, and the firms have to be directly opposite of the households. Then, the way that I've drawn the arrows, I'm going to label the two markets. So the households, we're going to put the product market here. And it'll make more sense once we label the arrows. And then the other market is the factor market, sometimes called the resource market. Now, if we kind of take a look at what the households give to firms through the factor market, inside the factor markets you have the four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. So what I'm going to draw is what the households give to the firms through the factor market, which at its most basic level is the factors of production. Households have the factors of production, they sell them to the firms. But most often when households give factors of production to the firms, it takes the it takes labor or it gives labor to the firms. So most often factors of production from the households to the firms are usually labor. That's the easiest way to think about it. Then the firms take that those factors of production and the labor, they transform it into goods and services, which they then put into this kind of metaphorical product market, and then households enter the product market, which you may view as a store or an online store where you receive goods and services from. So the outer wheel shows that the households give factors of production, mainly labor, to the firms, the firms turn that into goods and services, which then they sell back to the households. Now, the reason I've labeled the inner circle going to the right as being green is because this is our money wheel. Now, each specific transaction has certain names to them, but at the most basic definition of the circular flow model, we have money circulating. The households, when they want goods or services, have to pay money. And so when you enter into the product market, you receive goods and services and you pay the product market, which then end up going to the firm, and the firms then send more goods and services. And if we follow the money wheel all the way around, so once you buy products in the product market, the firms receive the money, and then they can go out and hire more factors of production, mainly labor, which then gives households more money. And then we have this money wheel that's kind of constantly turning. The more money you spend in the household, the more the firms can hire factors of production. And the less money that's spent in the product market, the slower this works, the more layoffs we have, and we could be in a recession if the households don't spend enough. And then the firms can't hire workers, and we have a breakdown in the system. So, as I just said, whenever there's a breakdown in the system, we're going to have a recession. So if for whatever reason, if households stop buying products, then firms stop generating revenue. If firms stop generating revenue, they have to hire less factors of production, mainly laborers. So the unemployment rate would go up or increase. And so when the unemployment rate increases, less money makes its way to the households and they have less to spend. And when they have less to spend, it continues this cycle so if this money wheel slows down, it can fall to the government to try to incentivize ways to make households spend more or for firms to hire more workers, which can start this money wheel back spinning. And then we can go back into the expansion phase, which is where we want to be. Now, to better get into what exactly the names are for the money wheel, we're going to take a look at that now. So households, when you spend in the product market, you usually just call that spending as the household. Various textbooks may call it different things, but spending will work for now. So households spend in the product market, then firms that receive the money from the product market, that's called revenue for the firm. So when firms receive revenue, and they're looking to hire workers, when they hire workers from the firms to the factor market, we call that wages rent, and profit. So that's what the payment is called from the firms to the factor market. And the money that households receive from the factor market is 
income. So when you receive a paycheck, you usually call that income. And that's basically what you would label the money wheel as. Households spend in the product market. Firms receive that money as revenue, which then they use to hire in the form of wages, rent, and profit. And then households receive that money as income. Now, if you'd like, see if you can go ahead and fill out this blank circular flow model remembering what the money wheel is labeled as. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, here's that circular flow model filled out. If you need to go back and view any part of the film, go ahead. And hopefully you learned what the different phases and cycles are in the circular flow model.